Okay, here we have a plate with two different types of holes in it. The holes start with either a kind of a narrow opening here that expands to a larger opening here, so it's like a diverging section of a hole. And then the other hole starts with a larger section then goes into a smaller section, so a converging style hole. We have stagnation conditions on the top side and then uh, back pressure on the bottom side. And we're asked to find the mass flow rate through each hole and explain why the, the mass flow rates are different. So as you might imagine, the, the two mass flow rates are going to be different. So let me sketch first just some uh, kind of streamlines here. The one on the left would, would look something like this. The flow's kind of going this way, whereas the one on the right would look more like that. So really what's happening here is hole B is just a converging nozzle, whereas hole A is like a converging, diverging nozzle. You can sort of imagine that the there's a converging part here, and then, then the middle here is a throat, and then it goes through a diverging section, whereas hole B just has a converging section, and this would be the throat here on the, the bottom side. So let's go ahead and look at hole B first, um, where we're modeling it as a converging nozzle. So the first thing I want to do is just check to see whether or not that flow is choked or not. So the way that we check that is we'll take the ratio PB over P0 and see whether or not it's less than P star over P0. And P star over P0, we're dealing with air here. Just work out what that ratio is from our isentropic formulas you'll find that it comes out to be 0.5283 with a specific heat ratio of 1.4. And so if we plug in for the back pressure, 100 kilopascals absolute, and then our stagnation pressure is 150 kilopascals absolute, you'll see that that ratio on the left-hand side comes out to be 0 0.6667. So it is not smaller than P star over P naught. So that means that this flow is not choked. So going through nozzle B, the flow is not choked um, because the back pressure, uh, the ratio of the back pressure to the stagnation pressure is greater than P star over P naught. So flow is not choked. What that means then is that the Mach number at the throat will be subsonic. And since the Mach number at that throat is subsonic, it means that the pressure there will be equal to the back pressure. Okay, so the way we'll find the mass, we'll use that piece of information in just a moment to find the mass flow rate. So the way we'll find the mass flow rate is we'll just <clears throat> set that equal to the density at the exit times the velocity at the exit times the area, times the area at the exit. The area at the ex exit is 0.2 square centimeters. Okay, now to find the density at the exit, we could uh, just use the isentropic stagnation ratio. So, for example, we can find the density at the exit to the stagnation density, relate that to the Mach number at the exit. It'll look like that. And the stagnation density we can get from the ideal gas law. That'll be P0 over RT0. And we know the stagnation properties, right? P0 is given right here. T naught's given here. We need to convert that T naught to an absolute temperature, so we'll just add in 273, so that's 293 Kelvin. So we know the P naught, we know the T naught, we know R for air is uh, 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin. It's a good number to remember. What we're missing then is the Mach number at the exit. So to find the Mach number at the exit, that's where we'll use the, the pressure at the exit. So remember that the, the pressure at the exit here will be the same as the back pressure because we know the Mach number at the exit is subsonic since the flow is not choked. So we can use that information to get the Mach number at the exit. So the pressure at the exit to the stagnation pressure is the same as the back pressure at the exit to the stagnation pressure. Or I'm sorry, the back pressure to the stagnation pressure. That's related to the Mach number at the exit in the following way. And then we know the back pressure, of course, is 100 kilopascals. Absolute, make sure these are absolute pressures. P naught, we know, is 150 kilopascals. Absolute. 
So we can solve for the Mach number at the exit. And that Mach number turns out to be um, 0.784. So you can see it's, it is indeed subsonic. So we now know the Mach number at the exit. So that means we can get the density at the exit. So to find the density, so what we'll do is we'll just substitute that in. And that'll give us the density at the exit to be 1.335 kilograms per cubic meter. So everything's good so far. The only thing now that we're missing is the velocity at the exit. So to get the velocity at the exit, we'll just multiply that by the Mach number at the exit times the speed of sound at the exit. So the velocity at the exit is the Mach number at the exit times the speed of sound at the exit. Speed of sound at the exit, we can relate to the temperature at the exit through square root of KRT at the exit. It's an ideal gas, so we can use that expression which means we need to know the temperature at the exit, and that we can again uh, go back to our expressions for, in this case, it's adiabatic flow. It holds true for isentropic flow as well. So we have that expression. We know the stagnation temperature that's given up here, that's the 293 Kelvin. So we know that. We know the Mach number at the exit, so we can solve for the temperature at the exit. That comes out to be 261 Kelvin. So we can then substitute that in to the speed of sound expression here, multiply it by the Mach number, and we can find the velocity at the exit. So combining those together gives us the velocity at the exit, exit of 254 meters per second. So now that we have all this information, we can go ahead and calculate the mass flow rate. So the mass flow rate through hole B comes out to be 6.78 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per second. Okay, so that's for hole B. So just to kind of recap quickly what we did here is we said, okay, this is a converging nozzle. What we want to do is check to see whether or not the flow is choked. So we checked the back pressure to stagnation pressure ratio, compared it to the sonic pressure to the stagnation pressure ratio. What we found was that the flow is not choked, then we said, okay, well, let's find the mass flow rate as uh, density times velocity times the area at the exit. To get the density at the exit, we used our stagnation um, ratio here for isentropic flow. Required the Mach number at the exit. We got that from the pressure condition at the exit. This is a key piece here that the pressure at the exit is equal to the back pressure since we know that the Mach number there is subsonic. So we can get the Mach number at the exit gives us the density at the exit. We could do the same thing to get the temperature at the exit. And then we got the velocity by using the Mach number and the speed of sound at the exit. Okay, so that's hole B. Now hole A is a converging diverging nozzle. So um, whether or not the flow is choked is, uh, is a little different. The criteria is different. And let me just go ahead and draw a picture of how the pressure would vary in a converging diverging nozzle as a function of position. Hopefully you've seen this from the lecture notes as well as maybe some previous examples. So this is P over P naught on the vertical axis. Here's our P star over P naught. And we've got um, these various cases that we've looked at in, our, um, in the lecture notes, etc. So let me just sketch them all out here and then we'll talk about the ones that are relevant, or the one that's relevant to us. In this case, oops, that's not a good drawing. Okay, so these are the, some of the various cases that we'd come across for flow through a converging diverging nozzle. The one that we care about right now is whether or not the flow is choked. So if we have the following situation, uh, this, this contour, let me highlight it. If we follow this contour, that's kind of the critical case for when the flow is choked. If the back pressure is less than that value, then we know the flow will be choked. Because what happens here is the flow goes, it's, it starts from stagnation conditions. You go through this converging nozzle, and the flow, the Mach number here will be subsonic. 
And then right at that point, the Mach number at the throat is equal to 1. So then the flow would be choked. And for this particular case, it has the highest back pressure. What will happen is the flow will go uh, subsonic, sonic, and then go back to being subsonic again. And since it's subsonic at the exit, the back pressure and the exit pressure will be the same. So if our back pressure is less than this critical value, so if we're down in here with the back pressure, then we know the flow will be choked and we can use the choked flow mass flow rate exp expression. So let's just check that as our critical case. It's analogous to checking this case here for the converging nozzle. We we're just checking to see whether or not the flow is choked. But since it's a converging diverging nozzle, the criterion is a little different. It's, it's this curve that we have to check against. We have to see what the back pressure is for that. So the way that we can check that is we will um, use the sonic area ratio, area of the exit, to the sonic area. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to find what back pressure, we're going to see what back pressure will result in this particular case. So for this particular case, the throat area is the sonic area, right? Because it's a Mach number one for that particular case. So the sonic area is just the area of the throat. This will be a function of the Mach number at the exit. Now, I'm not going to write out the full formula here. I'll just write it as function of Mach number. But you can look it up in the lecture notes or look it up on the formula sheet. Now, when we solve this for the Mach number, we have to keep in mind that there's both a subsonic and a supersonic Mach number value that will give us the same area ratio. What we want is the subsonic value because, remember, in this case, the, the the diverging section Mach number is subsonic. If we found the supersonic Mach number, that would correspond to this case down here. Supersonic Mach number right there. But we really just care about the, the subsonic case. Um, for this converging diverging nozzle, the area of the exit here is 0.3 centimeters squared, and the throat area is 0.2 square centimeters. So let me write that down. So the area of the exit is 0.3 square centimeters. Area of the throat, which is A star, is 0.2 square centimeters. And then we can solve this for the exit Mach number that's subsonic. And what you'll get is that Mach number comes out to be 0.43. Okay, so that would be the Mach number right at the exit here. And again, what we're trying to get is what the back pressure is. So to find that, what we'll do is we'll use the pressure ratio, PE over P naught. Looks like this. This formula is easy enough to write down, so I'll just go ahead and do that. And then we can plug in that exit Mach number into here. We know the stagnation pressure is still the 150 kilopascals. So let me write that out. And then we can solve for the exit pressure for this particular case. And when you work out those numbers, um, I guess I didn't actually work it all out. I, I, what I did is I actually did the ratio. Sorry, I don't have the, those numbers worked out. But I, I do have the ratio, PE over P0. That comes out to be 0 0.8805. Okay, now if you remember, the back pressure to stagnation pressure ratio was, uh, it was, I think the back pressure we said was 100, yeah, 100 kilopascals. Stagnation pressure was 150 kilopascals. So that ratio comes out to be 0 0.6, um, I think it was 0 0.667, 0 0.6667. So what you'll see is, um, the exit pressure for this Mach number, um, remember that that exit pressure is equal to the back pressure, right? So this, this back pressure to stagnation pressure ratio is higher than um, what we currently have. So what that means is that our actual back pressure is somewhere down in here. Okay, so, so this value, let me just kind of explicitly show it. So for that particular case, the PB over P naught corresponding to the green highlighted case would be 0.8805. And our actual back pressure to stagnation pressure ratio is 0.667. So we're somewhere down below, somewhere down below that green line. 
So that means our flow is in fact choked. So we have a we have choked flow conditions. So to figure out what the mass flow rate is um, for this converging diverging nozzle, which is choked, we can use the choked flow mass flow rate. So that looks something like this. Um, let's see, I always, I can never remember. You know what, I, I can't exactly remember what the power is, but you can look on the formula sheet to figure out what the exponent is there, but the rest of it looks like this. Okay, so this is the um, choked flow mass flow rate. This this is on the formula sheet or in the lecture. Again, I can't exactly remember that what that exponent is there, but you can look that up. Here we know um, all the values, right? The P naught is a 150 kilopascals absolute. T naught was the 293 Kelvin. The A star here is the area of the throat, which was the 0.2. Right? If I go back up here, yeah, it's the 0.2 square centimeters. So we can calculate the mass flow rate, and when you do all that and work out the numbers, it'll come out to be 7.08 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per second. So this is the mass flow rate through hole A. So you'll see here that the mass flow rates are, in fact, different from one another. So through hole A, which is like a converging diverging section, or di converging diverging nozzle, it's about 7.1 times 10 to the minus 3, whereas hole B, which is just a converging nozzle, it's about 6.8 times 10 to the minus 3. So the mass flow rate is higher for the converging diverging nozzle. And that's because the flow is choked for that case. It's not choked for the other case. So when you're dealing with these um, compressible flow, um, when you're dealing with compressible flows, though, the orientation of the hole actually makes a difference. It, uh, you get different behavior, whether it's looking like a converging diverging nozzle or just a converging nozzle. It's kind of an interesting uh, result. All right, with that, we'll go ahead and end this example.